always seal your upper hoink. That's it. That's tip number one. It's short, but it's a good one. But why do you ask? Well, because if you don't, your alcohol ink will eventually fade away. And we don't want that. So, so that's it. That's tip number one. <laughs> when you are going to seal your alcohol ink art, you need two things. The first one is a water-based varnish, and the second is UV protection. Um, a brand that I know a lot of people use and really, really like is called Kmar or Kmar. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it. I'm going to call it Kmar. Just correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I haven't tried it myself, but I only hear good things about it. That's the word on the street anyway. Um, when you're using this brand, you need two different products. One is a can with the um, water-based varnish and the other is a can of the UV protection. You need to use both varnish first, UV protection second. Um, a lot of people, I see this all the time, especially on Facebook, recommend this brand to others. And sometimes they make it sound like this is the only brand of varnish you can use for alcohol ink. Luckily, that is not true. Um, I think it is re probably a really good product, but there are many, many other brands of water-based varnish that you can use. I haven't tried all of them, but I have tried some, and I'm going to show you some of those right now. This is my absolute favorite. This is Molotov water-based varnish. The reason I like this um, is because it's very easy to do thin coats, and it dries really, really quickly. I'm going to show you in uh, tip number three why I like to do thin coats. If I'm all out of um, the Molotov, I usually use one of these. This is um, Liquitex and a Winter Newton, also water-based. And um, it's a little more tricky to do really thin coats with these, but it still works really well and um, it seals my ink the way that it's supposed to. One of the really good things about these three are that they have UV protection in them. So you only need one can when you're spraying your ink and I think that's that's really smart. Now, if you're going to try one of these products that I have shown you or the Kmar or even like a completely different brand of varnish, I highly recommend that you do a little do a little test first. Find an old piece that you didn't really like and um and spray the varnish on and see what happens because there are a few things that can affect the outcome of your varnish. One is um, it can be too cold or too hot to varnish your paintings. High humidity is also not too good so that can have an effect. Um, also the alcohol ink itself. There are many brands, some are really good, some not so much. That could also have an effect on your varnish so please um, before you start spraying 10 of your best alcohol ink paintings, do a little test with the varnish that you choose to try out. I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to say about varnish, and I forgot. Hmm. Let's hope it wasn't something important. <laughs> I can't remember at all. Sorry. It might come to me later. Moving on. So tip number three is about dust. We all know it, it's very annoying and dust just sort of seems to always land right on your alcohol ink piece no matter what you do. So before you varnish, do everything you can to remove as much dust as you possibly can. Blow it off with your breath, use a little paper towel, use canned air. Um, just wipe it off with your fingers the best that you can before you varnish it. Um, going back to doing very, very thin coats of varnish. The reason I do that, because when you do a very thin coat, it also dries really quickly. So if a piece of dust just happens to land right there after you varnished it, as soon as it's dry enough to touch, you can sometimes just sort of rub that annoying little piece of dust off. So that is why I do really, really thin coats. 
And when you do varnish your pieces, always do it outside. Do not spray varnish inside your house. Always do it outside. And to be safe when you do it and um, keep yourself from inhaling that varnish, you need to wear one of these. Tip number four is um, also a little dust related. It's about how you actually start applying these coats of varnish and trying to get as little dust in it as possible. Now, a lot of people will find a table somewhere. They will lay their painting down flat like this and then start spraying the varnish. When you have it like this, there's a much greater chance of getting more dust on your piece. So the way I do it, and I think that's the best way, is to varnish it like this. When it's upright like this, there's less dust will land on your piece. So you go outside and you find somewhere, a fence or something where you don't mind getting a little varnish on. You get one of these little clip thingies, put it on your piece right at the top and you hang it up on the wall. Spray. Just let the fumes sort of evaporate a little. You go inside, hang it up on the wall again, on a little nail somewhere, and you leave it like this to dry. I think that's really smart. What do you think? Clip thingy. So, uh, we are now going to pretend that I am actually outside getting ready to varnish something. Now, before you start, you always need to shake your can really, really well. Somewhere between one and two minutes, um, this is very important, always shake. Once you've sprayed it, maybe a piece or two, you need to shake it again. This is very important. So when you start spraying, you have to move your can fairly quickly in order to do thin coats. It's also important that when you go from one side to the other, you go over the edge. If you stop the can right at the edge, like this, you will end up with a whole lot of varnish, potentially so much that it will start to run. So always move quickly and go over the edges of the paper. Most of these will tell you how far away from the piece you need to be. I usually do somewhere between 15 to 20 centimeters, um, but Usually it says so somewhere on the can. How many coats of varnish do you need to do? Well, it depends a little bit. Like I said earlier, I do thin coats so that it is easier to remove the annoying dust. I always have a lot of um, negative space on my pieces. So you can see every little piece of dust in the white. So that's why I do the thin coats. I do at least four or five coats. If you don't have any negative space, you can do thicker coats because you're not gonna notice if there is a little dust in there, not as easily. So thicker coats and then maybe do two or three. The most important thing is that you are sure that your entire piece is covered in varnish and UV protection. When you're done varnishing, you need to turn this upside down Press this and do this for about 10 seconds until no more varnish comes out. If you do not do this, some of you know this already, I didn't know this when I varnished my first painting 20 years ago. If you don't do this, the varnish will dry up inside this. And the next time you go out to varnish your paintings, either nothing will come out or it will come out in big drops and land all over your piece and that is definitely not what you want. So always Flip this upside down, press this for about 10 seconds, very important. Sealing uh, is not just for your paintings, whether it be on canvas or paper. You also need to seal something like ceramics. It's become very popular and I absolutely love doing alcohol inks on ceramics. This is um, the vase that I did in my last video. I talked uh, briefly about sealing this, but I'm just gonna go through it one more time. For something like this, you need something that is a little more resistant because this is something that you are going to be using and 
touching and handling, you need to clean it once in a while. So you're going to need something a little extra for your ceramics. Now what I start off with is the same varnish as before with UV protection in it. This is very important. Again, I do four or five coats, thin layers, trying to prevent the dust. I then leave my ceramic piece to dry for at least a couple of days. This needs to be completely dry. Then I move on to this. This is polyurethane. This is also a water-based varnish, but this is different than the other one. This will leave a very hard surface. It will be very resistant. It will be difficult to make scratches. It's not 100% scratch proof, but this will give you a surface that means you can actually use it and touch it and um, don't throw it in the dishwasher, but hand wash only. I absolutely love this for my ceramics. This one you brush on. You can also get it in a can and spray it on. Now which one I use sort of depends on what it is that I want to seal. With the vase, it has sort of an odd shape, so it was easier for me to spray it on. This takes a lot longer to dry. I leave about four to five hours between coats. And I do, again, four or five coats. You sort of build this up in layers. When you have done those four or five coats, you're gonna need to leave your ceramic piece to completely dry for at least I'd say three to four weeks. If you try a product, it will tell you how long it takes before it is ready to use. But it does take a while, but the result is really, really good. I absolutely love this. Now, there are many different brands. I've heard people talk about something I believe is called Bright Tone that I've heard really good things about. I haven't tried it. Some say it is food safe. Um, if you know whether or not that's true, let the rest of us know. Um, the ones that I use are not food safe, but I don't do uh, ink on things like mugs, so I don't really need it. But polyurethane, very, very good for sealing your ceramics. There's also something called Mod Podge. Um, this is actually a glue, but you can also use it as a sealer. When it comes to ceramics, I prefer the polyurethane. I know a lot of people use this. I just... This is okay, polyurethane I think is much better for sealing your ceramics. Um, we should probably also talk about another thing that a lot of people like, which is resin. I know a lot of people use resin on coasters, but unfortunately I am not gonna be able to help you out with that at all because I don't really use resin. I tried it many years ago, I never really fell in love with it, so I actually don't use it at all. So I can't help you with that, sorry. I, I know stuff, I don't know everything. If um, one of you guys has some recommendations or thoughts on resin, please leave a comment. Um, I would actually sort of like to encourage you to leave comments if you have, um, if you've tried a different brand of varnish or you know of a really good way to keep dust off your paintings, maybe a tip that's better than mine. Do you have a lot of knowledge about resin? If you leave a comment, um, the rest of us can sort of um, learn from your experience and benefit from that. I would really like it if we could sort of all share our experiences about ways of doing things about products. We all live in different parts of the world and it would be really, really nice um, if we could, I think, l just learn from each other. I know stuff, but again, I don't know everything. So. Leave a comment if you have some useful information that you would like to share with the rest of us. I think that's kind of it for this video. Um, wait, no, the bonus tips. I got bonus tips coming up. There's two of them and they're really good, I think. Bonus tip number one. Just in case you don't have somewhere to hang up your piece after you varnish them. If you don't have one of those little clip things and you leave your piece to dry on a table, all the dust will land right in your wet varnish. So 
very easy way to prevent that is you get some of your tiny little alcohol ink bottles. You put them around your piece and you take a piece of cardboard and put it on top, preventing dust from landing on your recently varnished piece. Bonus tip number two. I usually varnish many, many pieces at the same time. I let them dry up on the wall or under the cardboard. Um, once they're dry, they usually end up lying around like this on my craft table, taking up all the space, which is very annoying. So here is what I do instead. I use one of these. This is actually for chopping boards, but it can also be used for sort of temporarily storing your alcohol ink paintings. I just pop them in like this. This is basically just a space saver. I think it's really smart, very handy, and um, then I get more room on my craft table. So that was bonus tip number two. That is all the uh, tips on sealing alcohol ink that I have for you. I know it's sad, but this video has now almost come to an end. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. If you have something you would like to share with the rest of us, please leave a comment. Um, have you remembered to subscribe to my channel? You have? Okay. Just a little reminder if you want to see some more of my videos. I, uh, I really hope you enjoyed this and um, I hope to see you back again here real soon.